905 on Super Talk 99.7 WTN. My name is Chris Hand. Good morning. How are you? Mac, what's up, dude? What's going on? Not Hello. Much. You having a good day? Yeah, we're just starting, so. <laughs> Don't sound too confident. <laughs> I mean, it's just starting. You could ruin it pretty quickly, but we'll see. I can ruin it personally? <laughs> the proverbial you. All right. Proverbial? Yep. All right. It's a, it's a, it's a college word right there. All right. <laughs> Places I didn't go. <laughs> I, I only went to college for parties occasionally. That's a good reason to go. I never went for schooling. <laughs> uh, all right, so we got a, we got a big show today. Reverend uh, John Amachuku is going to come on the show. He's a Turning Point Faith contributor. He's uh, y- you might know him. He is uh, he's been on the show before. He's he goes by Rev Wu Truth on social media. And he goes to school board meetings and he gets kicked out for for reading the books that they have in the schools for the kids. So he'll read a book and then the school board will remove him because he's being inappropriate and vulgar. And he says, guys, this is what you have in the school for our kids. So I'm really uh, looking forward to talk with him. He's a smart guy. He's a, he's a great guy. Todd is here on time on the Members Nutrition text line. Wow, Todd, Todd hello. Nice. Uh, sorry, I didn't mean to get sidetracked, but, I mean, we have to acknowledge greatness. <laughs> exactly. We have to. <laughs> but uh, Re- Rev Wu, uh, John Amachuku, is going to join the show at 10.05. He uh, he was just in Alabama, and it was it was a, a pretty uh, great clip that they put out on social media. I want to address some things tonight as it pertains to a book that can be found in this district. I guess you need this kind of material to teach kids how to have it. The ass has a lot of bacteria that when spread elsewhere can cause lots of problems if you're going to use a toy for penetration. Are we teaching kids in this district how to disinfect that go into a person's rear end? This is trash. And we have five men on this board. And if you keep this filth in the school system, you're either a punk or a pervert. I love it. If you keep this filth in the school in the school system, you're either a punk or a pervert. There is not a better line to deal with these people on the school boards than that. Are you a punk or are you a pervert? Are, are you going to allow this kind of filth in our schools? And, and they have no answers. And since they don't want to be labeled names, the books get removed. Are you a punk or are you a pervert? This is asinine, it's corrupt, and it should be removed. So he gets interrupted by a leftist at this school board meeting, and he tells her uh, very quickly, sit down. It should be removed. Right. Have a seat. (laughs) What upset you about what he said up there? Well, it's more what I know than he, because I know what he has stood for. He's against DEI. I absolutely disagree with his viewpoint. Oh, okay. Well, she can't she can't argue that the book belongs in school, but she she disagrees with his views on DEI. Oh, huh. you know who's for uh, pornographic books in our school? Well. It's the best female vice president we've ever had. All right, had it or hit it, book bans. Oh God, had it, had it, had it, had it. Again, the idea that you would restrict information and, um, and you know, the same people who are doing that are this, you know, some of the same people who are denying our history. I mean, are trying to kind of just whitewash it. And it's, I think it's absolutely, you know, horrible. Oh, it's horrible. Who could deny kids this kind of information? Why would you do that? Kids, how to have it. The ass has a lot of bacteria that when spread elsewhere can cause lots of problems if you're going to use a toy for penetration. Are we teaching kids in this district how to disinfect that go into a person's rear end? 
Well, if Kamala Harris had her way, uh, we would not be able to deny kids that information. So we're going to talk to Rev Wu about that at 10.05. Very much looking forward to that conversation. He's a great guy. Find him on Twitter, Instagram, at Rev Wu Truth. You can share these clips. You can kind of get yourself informed and get yourself motivated with how you go into your school board meetings because it, he, he can't be everywhere, right? Rev Wu is not coming to your school district, unfortunately. So we, we need to keep going, keep pushing. Uh, and I'm going to ask him, you know, how we can do this ourselves. Because, you know, like, like everybody else, we always look, you know, nobody's coming to save us. We're going to have to do it ourselves. Nobody's going to look out for your kids. You're going to have to do it yourself. So uh, we're going to talk to him about it. Very much looking forward to that. Um, also, uh, did you see Donald Trump at Chick-fil-A in Atlanta, Georgia yesterday? Oh my gosh. This must terrify the left. On one hand, you have Joe Biden giving a joint presser with the prime minister of Japan. Joe Biden has two gigantic teleprompters and a, I mean, a notebook, a, a, a an encyclopedia, if you will, of note cards at what must be 72-point font that you can see in the reflection of his glasses. And on the flip side, you, you have Trump in Atlanta, Georgia, going to a Chick-fil-A. The, the, uh, the, the people in the Chick-fil-A, it's in Atlanta, predominantly black crowd. And they see Donald Trump and they love the man. You're not going to see this on mainstream news. ABC is not going to cover this trip that Trump made to Chick-fil-A in Atlanta, Georgia. But we will because this is important. And it goes with the polls. When they say Joe Biden is losing the black vote, it shows when he goes to Atlanta, Georgia and just stops at Chick-fil-A randomly. So um, Trump is talking to the people in the crowd and, and he says, uh, you know, he, he this woman says, you supported HBCUs better than Biden, historically black college and universities. And, and she's absolutely right. Well, we took care of those yeah. colleges. And sure did, sure did. Much yeah, better than Biden did. So I was like, uh, this is Clark Atlanta, this is Stoneman, this is Morehouse, this is Morris wow. Stoneman. Isn't that great? So I don't yeah. care what the media tells you, Mr. Trump. Thank we you. support you. Do you hear that? I don't care what the media tells you, Mr. Trump. We support you. People have lost all faith in the media. Uh, we, okay. Yeah, Come here, let out. me give you a hug. There's a picture of this woman hugging Donald Trump. And, and it must make the left's head explode. How could she support this racist bigot, Donald Trump. How could she? Well, because people don't believe what you're selling us. Because the media lies to us constantly over and over and over. The Democrat Party lies to us constantly over and over and over. And, and when you look at the price of goods, the price of rent, the price of food, the price of gas, I mean, we can go down the line. Uh, things are not getting better under Joe Biden. He made all sorts of promises uh, to the black community, but things are not getting better. And the crowd knows that. The crowd is telling Trump, we love you. How you doing, Trump? I'm doing good. I love you, man. You look good. You look good. We love you, man. Can I get a handshake? Can I get a handshake? Yeah, I'll give you one. Make America great. This is in Atlanta, Georgia. Trump is not supposed to get this kind of reaction in Georgia. This makes the left's head spin. They have thrown everything at this man. They have demonized him every chance they get. But people don't believe on it. Don't be don't believe it. They don't believe it at all. There was a reporter there from RBSN, uh, and he asked Trump about the woman 
bringing up his support for HBCUs. Yeah, well, people that might not have heard, it, you did historical things yeah. for black colleges. Just I did. I, touch I, on that. I funded them long term. They were being going on a year to year basis, and they're always being chiseled and cut. And I got to know the heads of the black colleges and universities, and they came in, they saw me. And after three years, I said, how come you keep coming back? They said, they make us come back every year. I said, nope, no longer. And I gave them long-term financing, long-term commitments from the government. They do a fantastic job. And they all love me, I will tell you. But that young lady was so nice to bring that up because most people forget. Most people forget. Most people forget. I understand. It's not like the media covers any of the good things, right? In fact, uh, the the bad things that they cover, they they kind of make up from thin air. It's amazing, though. He has this truly iconic moment, and he does it without even trying. The media will not touch this. I know it has the Democrats shaking in their boots, because while Trump is having this moment, Biden is having this moment. Elect me. I'm in the 20th, 20th century, 21st century. The difference couldn't be more apparent. Joe Biden is having a joint presser with the Japanese prime minister. And uh, he has notes, he has teleprompters, and he still can't speak well. I, I will say this, uh, for the first time... I think I've heard uh, Joe Biden tell a foreigner that they're, they're, they can't stay in America. Prime Minister is going to travel to North Carolina tomorrow to visit that project. Don't stay. Don't stay. We need you back in Japan. They'll probably try to keep you. That, that may be the first time that Joe Biden told someone who was born in another country, don't stay. And he had a tough time speaking the entire time, despite... The two teleprompters, despite the note cards, Japan's prime minister did not have a teleprompter, mind you. Including the Senkaku Islands is unwavering. Taco Islands, right? Who doesn't love the Taco Islands? But the best, uh, listen, Trump is at Chick-fil-A. He's doing all these things. But the best part is he's so funny. He's so funny. He's in the midst of this great moment, and he's gaining the support. He's, he's uh, you know, meeting people in the community in Atlanta, shaking hands, kissing babies, doing the thing. The people love him. He buys uh, milkshakes and chicken for everyone, which is, it, it always, uh, I always chuckle when he does that because I, I remember this clip that I heard where they say, well, Trump is worried about being poisoned. So he goes in and he buys things for everyone. Because then, you know, if you buy 30 milkshakes, you can't poison them all, and he chooses his at random, right? That, I, I, it, that's, like, burned into my head. So he buys, he buys, you know, a few dozen milkshakes for the crowd. He's, he buys a bunch of chicken for the crowd. He says, and we'll, we'll take some, too, uh, after we hand some out. But in the midst of this moment, he, he just randomly decides to dunk on Hillary Clinton. And... Uh, I couldn't have I couldn't have been more tickled pink, if you will. Hillary had more than twice the money that we had, and uh, how did that uh, race turn out? I'm I'm not a hundred percent sure. <laughs> and uh, even though this is a joke, right? This is, I mean, absolutely a joke. And uh, how did that uh, race turn out? I'm I'm not a hundred percent sure. If the media covers anything from his Chick Fil A visit, it's it's going to be this. And uh, how did that uh, race turn out? I'm I'm not a hundred percent sure. And I can see the headlines. It'll say uh, Donald Trump forgets results of 2016 election. Does Donald Trump have dementia? The former president struggles with remembering the results of the 2016 election. And uh, how did that uh, race turn out? I'm I'm not a hundred percent sure. Donald Trump can't remember. The results of the 2016 election. More tonight on CNN. Is the former president suffering from dementia? And uh, how did that uh, race turn out? I'm I'm not 100% sure. If they cover any of his Chick-fil-A visit, that's, uh, that's the only part they're going to cover. That's it. That <laughs> They won't touch anything else from that entire visit. They won't. They can't. 
because it displays what the polls are showing us. Trump's support in the black community is huge. There were crowds, crowds of black residents in Atlanta, Georgia, watching the motorcade come through, cheering for him, chanting free Trump. You know, I see Biden draws crowds when his motorcade comes through. They chant other things. They, they chant very different things. But it was, it was a very, very cool moment at Chick-fil-A in Atlanta, Georgia yesterday. And on the flip side in Washington, D.C., it was a very, very sad moment. Because the guy running our country, he's not all there. And they give him so many tools to help him get through what should be routine and easy for the president of the United States. And he can't get through it. He's not equipped to do a press conference with a foreign leader. If he can't do a press conference with a foreign leader, how can he talk to foreign leaders? How can he negotiate things with foreign leaders? How can he prevent war? Oh, well, he doesn't. Spoiler alert. It's 921 on Super Talk 99.7 WTN. My name is Chris Hand, and I want to tell you about my friends at the Glock store. You've heard everybody on WTN talking about the Glock store. Matt and Dan rave about the Glock store. And I'll tell you what, before I got to go check it out myself, I thought, oh, okay, cool. Like, I get it. It's a gun store. They have a range. You know, how, could, how different can that be? Well, I, I'm here to tell you I was wrong. I went to the Glock store. I checked it out. Dan and Matt were right. And this is, I'm not, this is tough for me to say. It's hard. It's hard to admit that. Dan and Matt were right. I was wrong. The Glock store is absolutely as amazing as they told me it was. This place is huge. It's bright. It's well stocked. The people that work there are unbelievably friendly and more knowledgeable uh, than myself and more knowledgeable than I can explain, especially if you're asking them about home and self-defense because that's what they specialize in at the Glock store. Well, that and custom Glocks. The Glocks are beautiful. Beautiful. You have to see it to believe it. I was I was taken aback because they make a lot all these performance parts right here in Nashville, from pyramid triggers to extended controls to tungsten guide rods. And then on top of making them here in Nashville, they install them for you for free while you wait. But the biggest difference between the Glock store and and some gun range, is that they don't have lanes. The Shoot 270 indoor ranges were unreal. They have private shooting rooms with personal instructors. And some of those shooting rooms mimic a home, uh, so you can learn how to clear rooms in the dark. You can do it in the dark. It's unbelievable. And you do it with a private instructor. I can't wait to have my first session at the Glock store. Uh, I can't wait to really dive into that training because, uh, you know, you can never have enough training. So I'm going to do it in a couple weeks. My wife is going to join me for, for some training as well. She can't wait either. You know, I, I tell her all the time, you, you have to be trained up. You have to be ready. We we got too many kids, you know. We, the, our defense is our responsibility. She can't wait either. I told her about the Glock store like I'm telling you about the Glock store. She's all in. The Glock store, you need to be all in, too. Glockstore.com, minutes from the airport and worth the drive from anywhere.
Iowa's governor has signed a bill targeting illegal immigration. I'll tell you about it at 9.30 on Super Talk 99.7 WTN. Thank you, Ken Weaver. It is Super Talk 99.7 WTN. Jerry in Fairview, been waiting on the line, says he has a question. Uh, Jerry, what's up, man? Hey, Chris. How you doing, buddy? Good. How are you? <laughs> All right. I, usually I call with a comment, but I have a question this time. Um, what would you do? to change the situation we're in now in this country where we have what's what I call the tyranny of the minority. And I don't mean minority as in uh, black or Hispanic or anything like that. Mainly I'm talking about conservative versus liberal LGBT versus straight yep. along those lines, because what I'm seeing is everywhere I look in retail, in restaurants, in corporations, in politics, uh, the minorities seem to be put out on parade for everyone to see to make us think that that's the new norm. And I know there's more of us than them. I know Trump can't just come out and show his hand of what he would do if he got back in power to reverse some of the damage. But when I listened to that guy that you had on earlier playing the tape about the kids with the sex toys and all that stuff, he's a hero. Absolutely. And that's most of, that's most of us out here. And um, they're being, our voices are being suppressed. And, and then that, I know that's how Trump got elected the first time. He tapped into the nerve of the conservative uh, voiceless majority. But, like, what would you do? Because I don't see a way out of it the way ha they have it set up right now with, you know, with the political correctness. How do we reverse that polarization to where we get the balance back into our favor? So, it's, I mean, it's like, everywhere. Well, well, like you said, I mean, me personally, I would continue doing exactly what I am doing, but I know that not everybody has a yeah. show. Not everybody's like uh, aligned with, with turning point USA and things like that. But, but for like the average citizen, I would just say, don't silence yourself, right? Speak the truth as loud as you can from the top of every mountain. Don't censor yourself at the same time. Don't let uh, the politics of the day affect your joy. Keep being happy. Keep having fun because uh, the other side is miserable. And, and when people look at the difference between the two, it, it's very clear to see which side is actually doing better, right? So have fun, raise a family, get your kids to uh, share your values, and, and then uh, yell about everything. Don't silence yourself. One of the things that they want you to do is they want you to feel like you're in the minority. They want you to feel like you're marginalized, like you're on an island alone with your opinions, but it takes one person to start speaking up for other people to go, hey, you know, uh, I heard what you said and I, I agree with you. Be the first guy to stand up and, and just be as loud as you can be wherever you can be loud. That, that would be I my advice. I agree with that. I love it. And I want to say you said something earlier that goes along those lines, and that is don't wait for someone to come rescue you. No one's coming to rescue you. You have to be your own rescue and, Yeah, <laughs> Con control your control your destiny, Jerry. I appreciate the call, okay, man. Thanks, thanks so well, much. Buddy. Bye -bye. It's 931 on Super Talk 99.7 WTN. I'm Ken Weaver with your top stories. Full forecast in two minutes. Iowa's governor signing a bill allowing for the arrest and deportation of undocumented immigrants. And the Biden administration will require thousands more gun dealers to run background checks on buyers, impacting about 20,000 sellers' method of liquidation when they go out of business or lose their license. FBI Director Christopher Wray set to call on Congress to reauthorize part of FISA that allows the government to collect data on American without a warrant in the effort to thwart attacks on the U.S. But Tennessee 5th District Congressman Andy Ogles tells WTN's Nashville's Morning News he voted to block reauthorization because leadership would not allow debate on amendments to end warrantless monitoring on Americans. So we stood up and said, look, we're going to block this. We're going to reforce this conversation. And all we're asking is bring those amendments to the floor. Tim Burchett's the other Tennessee congressman who voted not to reauthorize. That's the latest news. Weather's next. I'm Ken Weaver, WTN News. The guaranteed offer is the easiest way to sell your home. It's really simple. We bring you an all-cash offer. You close in as little as 21 days. No home inspections, no lockboxes, no open houses. Go to MarkSpain.com to get a guaranteed offer and start packing.
Hey, what's up guys? This is Matt Murphy for Members Nutrition. I want to tell you about the Members Nutrition difference and I want to encourage you to go over to the Members Nutrition website. Number one, they believe at Members Nutrition that they can sell vitamins and supplements at a lower cost point and they're doing it every single day at membersnutrition.com. Number two, they want to make these products right here in the United States of America, not from some overseas company and they do that every single day. I encourage you to go to membersnutrition.com. You'll get 50% off your purchase price at checkout, you don't have to put in any codes. Just go to membersnutrition.com. Once again, membersnutrition.com. What an absolute mess. Hey, it's Dan Mandison. Look at my closets. Unorganized to say the least. Even my window dormer is a train wreck. Stuff is everywhere. Now, luckily, California Closets is coming to my rescue. My personal design consultant, Vince, stopped by, measured, and is now showing me how to become more space efficient and organized on his 3D CAD system. It is amazing. And soon, my space is going to be organized. And yes, even Bandit approves. California Closets, a local company that can customize the storage in any room of your house. California Closets, what can they do for you? Find them online at californiaclosets.com and reach out for your free in-home consultation. Hey, it's Dan Mandison. I love my Patriot Supply. It's emergency food so you can care for your family no matter what. And today, we're fixing creamy chicken flavored rice. And the thing I love about my Patriot Supply, it's easy. You just get the water, turn on the heat, and in minutes, we are ready to go. Now, this food lasts for 25 years in special packaging. And yes, it does taste great. And in just minutes, it's ready to eat. Patriots don't rely on the government to take care of their family in emergencies. It's up to you. Order right now and get $200 off a three-month food kit. It's important to go to preparewithmandis.com to get that great discount. That's preparewithmandis.com to get that great discount. Preparewithmandis.com, $200 off a three-month food kit.
that it was absolutely spying into my campaign. Attorney General William Barr said publicly today that he believes U.S. intelligence agencies spied on President Trump's 2016 campaign. I, I think there was some spying did occur. Yes, I think spying did occur. An FBI lawyer pleaded guilty to falsifying records in an application for a secret warrant to conduct surveillance on a Trump campaign aide, Carter Page. That the FBI relied on the so-called Steele dossier, a memo produced by former British spy Christopher Steele for a law firm representing the Hillary Clinton campaign. Michael Horowitz stated in his report that there were significant errors and omissions by the FBI's investigation team when it applied for a FISA warrant to monitor Trump's former campaign advisor, Carter Page. Former FBI Director James Comey admitted he was wrong when he said there weren't issues with the Bureau's use of the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act during its investigation into the Trump campaign. He's right, I was wrong. I was overconfident in the procedures that the FBI and Justice had built over 20 years. Our arguments were that FISA collects data on Americans and they search Americans routinely without a Fourth Amendment warrant. But the tool is being used in ways that maybe it shouldn't be used mm -hmm. to, to spy on Americans. The FBI usually comes forward and says, oh, we'll do better. We promise to do X, Y, and Z and then they don't do it. That has got to change, and I don't think more training, more rules is gonna do it. I think we have to fundamentally change the FISA process, and we have to use the appropriations process to limit how American tax dollars are spent at the Department of Justice. 9.39 on Super Talk 99.7 WTN. My name is Chris Hand. The House Judiciary put that out on Twitter last night. About FISA. The FISA bill was stopped last night. And, and I want to uh, I want to say thank you to the 19 Republicans that voted no on the FISA bill, including our own Andy Ogles and Tim Burchett. Tim's going to join the show tomorrow at 9.05 uh, and tell us why he voted against it. Looking forward to that conversation. But there were there were other Republicans that were in there as well. Uh, Nancy Mace, Anna Paulina Luna, uh, Perry, Rosendale, Roy, Stub, uh, Stubby from Florida. We had uh, Crane, Matt Gates, Good, Paul Goser, Andy Biggs. Uh, there, there were some uh, good ones in there. Lauren Boebert. They shut it down. Breitbart is reporting it as another blow to Speaker Mike Johnson. Because a, uh, the, the Republicans killed a motion to allow a vote on his proposed FISA reauthorization. 19 House Republicans uh, sided with Democrats Wednesday to defeat the rule, 228 to 193. So Johnson had been calling uh, for a House Republican conference meeting Wednesday afternoon because he wants to regroup as he tries to extend FISA's authorization with some reforms before the April 19th deadline. I don't like FISA. I don't like warrantless spying on Americans. I don't like how it's been abused. Uh, I'm sure you heard Andy Ogles on with Dan Mandis this morning. Uh, Scott Desjardins was on with him as well. Scott Desjardins voted for it. He voted for it. Not a fan. Not a fan of that at all. Andy Ogles voted against it. Andy said that since Joe Biden's been in office, uh, it's been used three million times against Americans. Three million. A and they can cry and whine and say, we have to do this to keep America safe. But guys, you hold the purse strings, the border's wide open. People on the terror watch list are coming across the border. A and FISA is being used to spy on Americans. They used FISA to hack into Tucker Carlson's text messages. The NSA did. They admitted it to him. They target conservatives. They target Catholics. They target pro-lifers. Constantly. I'm over it. So the House has finished voting for the week because, you know, why, why have to uh, vote again, right? Uh, so Republicans are going to have time to work out the differences. But the reauthorization's future in the House, it, it does remain uncertain right now. Tucker had the best line on Twitter. He said, you know, yeah, it's gone. It's gone for now. But like herpes, it's going to pop back up again. <laughs> it's, just, it's just terrible. Uh, Johnson hoped 
to move this off of his plate. He wanted to get this done yesterday before turning to what they're looking forward to next week, which is a, a yet-to-be-unveiled proposal to fund Ukraine. So that's what the conservatives are doing. They're trying to uh, reauthorize spying on American citizens without a warrant, and they're trying to get to money for Ukraine. Now Mike Johnson has to alter his schedule. Uh, the the House is, they, they've had two weeks off. They're, they're scheduled to recess again Thursday, April 18th for another week's break. I mean, they have a better time off schedule than you do, Mac. It's, am <laughs> it's amazing. It's impressive. It's like, <laughs> it blows my mind. Johnson is insisting after the vote that FISA's authorization cannot be allowed to lapse. Now, despite the, the program's authorization lapsing soon, most of the surveillance activities can continue for up to a year. But there's a fight over the inclusion of a measure requiring federal agents to obtain a warrant to continue surveilling American citizens caught up in surveillance of foreigners, and, and that is going to be a sticking point. No such measure is included in Johnson's bill, although Johnson did appear to have consented to an amendment vote on the matter. Uh, an amendment vote to include warrant requirements would likely pass easily, although some Republicans who voted against it yesterday insist that the warrant requirement is placed into the underlying bill before allowing it to move to the floor. So Johnson could bypass a rule vote by suspending the rules. That would allow a straight up or down vote passage, although it would require two-thirds support. That's not going to happen, uh, and it would almost certainly trigger a motion to vacate, which could end Johnson's speakership. Marjorie Taylor Greene has been pushing for the motion to vacate. Trump is just dead set against it. He is going on True Social uh, Tuesday night just yelling about it, uh, saying it was illegally used against me and many others. They spied on my campaign. That has been proven time and time again. They used FISA to spy on a president's campaign. Of course, the, the Biden administration and uh, the, the, the Biden administration and the intelligence community have made reauthorization of FISA without a warrant requirement a priority, and they are unlikely to roll over uh, in this fight. So it's going to continue. It's going to escalate. And that's just the way it is. And they'll probably get it. This this will probably continue. Um, hey, uh, my wife just texted me. Um, O.J. Simpson is dead. Did you hear that? No, I'm sorry. O.J. Simpson's dead. Yeah, I was waiting for I was waiting for you to. Yeah, I didn't I didn't want to interrupt. You should yes. have interrupted. I know it's breaking news, man. Seventy six after a cancer battle. He was allegedly in hospice these past couple months. He had denied that, but it's a picture of him using a cane. He looks frail these past few months, apparently. O.J. Simpson died. I mean, that's, that's big news, right? It's huge. That's massive. Uh, so he died yesterday. Succumbed to his battle with cancer. They say he was surrounded by his children and grandchildren. Uh, the family's asking that you please respect their wishes for privacy and grace. That's crazy. Yeah, I'm like reading about this. He suggested that he had beaten cancer, but the cancer came back. And then, yeah, I guess about a year later now. Claimed his life. The juice. Dead at 76. Wow. That threw me off. I didn't expect to see that. I know. Yeah, see the picture that you were talking about with the cane? He does yeah. look. He does look pretty frail. Especially when you think about, I mean, that's from January of this year. When you think about, I mean, just a couple of years ago, him, he started like make videos, trying to get back on social media. I mean, he looked healthy, looked good. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's, uh, does that's, it quick. I mean, is there, he was one of the first major mainstream athletes that crossed over into like superstardom. Yeah. And then in the 90s, he was the first major televised court case that just consumed the nation. Yeah. I mean, yeah, even the world felt like. I mean, you, you think about you read the, about it now. The impact he had, 
from the sports world and and landing major endorsements like he did. I think, what was his first one? It was Hertz, right? That uh, sounds right. 1978, he had the Hertz commercial. So Yeah, he was running through airports hurtling uh, luggage carriers. I mean, that was, a, that was a big barrier crossed, was it not? In, in the late 70s? I didn't know at the time. I was just a kid. And then, I mean, with the court case during the murder trial, I mean, that that changed the way media covered court cases. We got court TV out of that. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, they saw that as content that could be engaging for if it's not just a, a star athlete. They saw it as content they could make money off of. Well, yeah, of course. They interrupted the NBA Finals. Yeah. They interrupted the NBA Finals to cover his car chase. Yeah, NBA Finals in the 90s, yeah. Yeah. Not in the 70s when they were on tape delay. No. Like when they were Jordan. Yeah, Michael Jordan, yeah. Yeah. They when the NBA was on top. They interrupted Jordan. It's nuts. It's nuts. Sorry, that threw me way off. I, yeah, didn't ex- no. I didn't expect to see that. You should have broke in with well, that. Well, I, 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 I wanted to. Well, you were in your flow. You were you were flowing. Yeah, but this is, the juice died. Yeah. Plus, I mean, we're going to get stuck with FISA one way or another. <laughs> we can complain about that all day. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. O.J. Simpson. The most infamous high-profile American, one of the most infamous high-profile Americans of all time, dead after a cancer battle at 76. That's crazy. Crazy. I don't even know, like, how do Americans feel about that? Are you going to mourn OJ? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It is weird. Do you know what I mean? Like, even even me, I'm sitting here, I'm like, do I say RIP, you know? Yeah. It's odd. I mean, he killed his wife. Killed his wife and the, yeah, who she was, yeah, having an affair with, yeah. That's wild. I mean, right. allegedly. <laughs> allegedly. Allegedly. Was that the first major civil case? I have no, I have no idea. So, he, like, he got through the criminal case, yeah, and then they got him civilly. Yeah, I don't know. I have to do some some fact checking on that. John and Lawrenceburg on this uh, member's nutrition super text line says, I believe OJ's car chase was 30 years ago this year. Really? Wow. OJ Simpson, dead at 76. 1440 said, hope he doesn't mind the heat where he is going. Yep. I hear you. Crazy. And said he murdered two people. No glory does he deserve. He is receiving his justice now. It's 951. On Super Talk 99.7 WTN.
OJ Simpson has passed away. We've got details and reaction coming up at 10 on Super Talk 99.7 WTN. Thank you, Ken Weaver. The Members Nutrition Super Text Line has, has uh, gone into full debate mode Yep, on whether OJ is going to heaven or going to hell. <laughs> I, I don't know how that happened. It's immediately what it what it came down to. It, it's uh, it's it's wild. I don't know. It's not my choice. But uh, I, I I kind of I agree with uh, Sally on the Members Nutrition text line. Uh, they don't know. Only God knows. Yep. Some people are saying that he was saved and he'll be good. Other people are saying, Nah, it's not not going to work out like not that. Not going to happen. Yeah. I don't. I don't have any idea. I just find it funny that somebody dies, and that's <laughs> that's what yeah. that's what the Members Nutrition text line. <laughs> goes down and <laughs> somebody else uh, who was it it was a uh, zero zero eight oh man i missed it i lost it oh shoot what was it somebody i said uh he was he broke barriers oh yeah yeah, yeah, said, yeah yeah somebody said uh he didn't break any barriers we had black sitcoms already it's like well i wasn't i was actually talking about sports stars in media i wasn't talking about black people right yeah Sorry, sorry if I wasn't clear there. Yeah, and it's not like he was the first star black athlete, but, I mean, as far as the media was concerned and, I mean, the world, I mean, yeah, he, he really changed things in a lot of ways. He, he absolutely did. And the legacy lives on. I mean, if it wasn't for the OJ trial and Robert Kardashian, we wouldn't be dealing with Kim Kardashian and Chloe and Courtney. We would have Kylie and yeah, all of, all of them. Yeah. The, the entire Kardashian yeah. crazy empire can be directly correlated with OJ Simpson. That's it's insane. Nuts. It is insane. That's so weird to think Isn't about. It? If there's no OJ Simpson, yeah. we never have the Kardashians. That's crazy. And so they're just poor with no talent instead of rich with no talent. That's crazy. Yep. That's the truth. It's <laughs> the truth. <laughs> Forty five seventy six sent the uh, the main page of the Drudge Report, and they said Drudge Report has no chill. Uh, Drudge Report is running a, a headline that says "Cancer Murders OJ." Whoa! Yikes! <laughs> it's ten o'clock on Super Talk ninety nine seven WTN. It's 10 o'clock on the dot. I'm Ken Weaver with your top stories. Full forecast coming up in two minutes. And O.J. Simpson, the former football star who became better known as the defendant in one of the most watched murder trials of the 20th century, has died. Simpson's family made the announcement on X. He was 76. Here's Alex Stone. Despite his success as a two-time All-American halfback at USC and his career in the NFL, the 1994 murder of Simpson's ex-wife, Nicole Brown Simpson, and her friend Ronald Goldman would haunt Simpson for life. The world was captivated as he went on trial for murder. If it doesn't fit... You must acquit. He was acquitted, but his problems were not over. In 2008, Simpson was found guilty of a hotel room armed robbery in Las Vegas. Now, despite all of that, Simpson uh, was popular before that. He was actually a major character in some of the comedic movies The Naked Gun. He played Nordberg. Efforts to slow down inflation aren't working. We learned this morning that the rate at which wholesale costs is rising is 2.2% year over year in March. That follows yesterday's inflation report on consumers showing the rate at which prices are going up isn't slowing down. Day-to-day -day costs, rent, gas, also car insurance up 22% in the past year. A lot of these services that folks pay for every day, every month, are continuing to be higher than they historically would, and that's a problem. That's Elizabeth Schulze. And right now in our nation's capital, FBI Director Christopher Wray trying to convince Congress to reauthorize the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act, but 19 members of the GOP in the House blocked it yesterday. They don't they did not get a chance to offer amendments to end the part that allows warrantless monitoring of Americans because they say that is being abused. That's the latest news. Weather is next. I'm Ken Weaver, WTN News.
Hey, it's Chris Hand for my friends at Paul Winkler. You know Paul. I know Paul. He hosts a show here every Saturday from 3 to 6, the Investor Coaching Show on WTN. And he's been actually hosting that show for over 20 years. But you may not know that before he started that show, he spent his time studying under an economist who went on to win a Nobel Prize. That's how Paul cut his teeth in the industry. That's pretty cool. And he's an avid collector of financial planning designations. He has up to eight now. Uh, you know my wife and I, we work with Paul. We learn a lot from him, and we were learning from him way before I got my show on WTN. We would listen to his show, and, and we would uh, take it all in and realize, you know, we have to take our financial freedom into our own hands. And when I came on board here at WTN, that's why I wanted to work with his firm. And another reason is they hold themselves to the highest level of fiduciary status. Because of that status, I have to tell you, I get paid when I do these commercials. That's what Paul wants me to do. I love the transparency. That's the law. Where else do you hear that? Uh, but the reason I'm a client of Paul's is because I trust him and his team so much. Uh, his team does nothing on commission. I think that's so important because you can be sure when they're helping you make financial decisions for your future, it is for your future because they do nothing on commission and they'll educate you along the way so you never get that uneasy feeling of blind trust. When I started working with Paul, I considered myself financially illiterate and I have learned so much you can learn from Paul and his team as well. They'll take you in, they'll look at your whole financial picture and then help you make decisions because your financial picture is going to be unique to you. You will never, ever Get that uneasy feeling of blind trust. Set up a 15-minute phone call today with Paul and his team. All you have to do is go to the website, paulwinkler.com. That's paulwinkler.com. Ten oh six on Super Talk ninety nine seven WTN. Very excited about my next guest, Reverend John Amachuku. Uh, you may know him as Rev Wu Truth on Instagram and Twitter. Uh, Rev, how are you, sir? I'm doing well, Chris. Thank you so much for having me on. Hey, thanks so much, man. I, I heard this clip from Kamala Harris, and uh, and it, it kind of enraged me because they they act like we're banning books uh, on the conservative side. And I, I, I heard this clip and I thought to myself, I wonder what John would think of this. And <laughs> then I immediately I, I, I sent you a message. I said, can I get you on the show? Because I want to get your opinion on what Kamala Harris says right here. All right. Had it or hit it book bans. Oh, God. Had it. Had it. Had it. Had it. Again, the idea that you would restrict information. And, um, and, you know, the same people who are doing that are this, you know, some of the same people who are denying our history, I mean, are trying to kind of just whitewash it. And it's, I think it's absolutely, you know, horrible. John, your thoughts. Number one, Kamala Harris is a farce. She's feigning outrage. She hasn't had it. 
The issue is she's using blacks as useful idiots, as puppets, and as hostages for the communist gender theory movement. That is what she's doing. In my hand, I am holding a book entitled Queer, the Ultimate LGBTQ Guide for Teens. And this book is all around the country in several several districts. And this book says some things in it that I don't think, Chris, I can get away with saying on your show. At least I don't think so. No, no. I, and I, I saw your I, I saw you talking about this book in Alabama at a school board meeting. And and I have the clip. I have I have the edited version. So I, I think let me play let me play the edited version of what's in the book. That way we don't get ourselves in trouble uh, with the Biden FCC. Okay, this is you got it. This is this is John reading this book to an Alabama school district just a couple days ago. Kids, how to have it? That has a lot of bacteria that, when spread elsewhere, can cause lots of problems. If you're going to use a toy for penetration. Why is this allowed in our school districts, John? It's it's a part of the Obama Biden regime. You remember when Barack Obama decorated the White House in rainbow colors? Yep. You remember when he sought to redefine marriage? You know, marriage can be perverted, but it can't be redefined because mer- marriage was not granted to us by the Obama Biden administration. That was God's first holy institution. And so what we're, what we're seeing take place today is an intentional plan to push ideologies upon children and to rob them of their innocence. The book that I just referenced, Queer, the Ultimate LGBTQ Guide for Teens, it talks about putting sex toys in dishwashers to disinfect it. What child is going to benefit on the SAT score or, or the SAT test because of that. How is that going to help children compete in a global economy? How is it going to help minority students when many of them and many of your urban communities and cities are not reading and doing math on the proper grade level? How is that going to help Americans? It's not. But when, but through social emotional learning, there's this plan to deconstruct society, deconstruct the hearts and the minds of our kids and to make them prime candidates for socialism and communism. I'm asking everyone out there to go to my website. I have put together the most comprehensive plan in America on how to reclaim our communities and to reclaim our schools. Go to iknowgod.us. That's iknowgod.us. Scroll down. You'll see a section that talks about Cyclone 400. Click on that. It would, it would allow you to um, gain more information, and you can download this battle plan for free. Just subscribe there. You get it for free. Follow the movement and what I'm doing. I have now gone to 13 school board meetings, and by the end of May, I would have been to 15 different states speaking out on the behalf of um, children in America. I speak up for all children, not just black children, but white children, Asian children. Hispanic children, Pacific Islander children, all kids I stand for. Why? Because we should, and the church should engage the culture. But today, many of our pastors are spineless, they're weak, they're soft, and they're sissies. They don't want to address these issues. And so God has given me the charge to raise up 400 school board leaders around the country who will engage and will not sit on the sidelines. So what do you tell parents that are, are feeling the way you're feeling? How do you get started? Like, what, what is step one to getting involved in this process? Step, step one is to assert yourself. You are the parent, and you do not co-parent with the government. That's Amen. step one. Assert yourself. Know that children are on loan to you by God. The Bible tells us to train up a child in the way that he should go, and when he's old, he will not depart from it. Parents need to also become aggressive and demand their school boards to come up to the Judeo-Christian principles and standards that have made this country great. How do you find out if these books are in your kid's school's library? Several ways. Number one, you can just take a a casual stroll through the library. (laughs) I think every parent should stop by at least twice a year 
to see what books are in their kids' school library. Some of these um, books get in through online systems, like in Alabama they had a Sora app where the child could d download books online. And so you need to search that regularly as well. And then there are org um, organizations who have put together systems where you can go and find out um, the, the particular details in these books that are pushing critical race theory, you know, the ideology that whites are, inher are inherently racist and blacks are proverbial victims, you'll be able to find out through, book look, through booklooks.org and other websites what exactly is in these books so that you can best address these books and these materials. You know, it's, it's funny that you bring up DEI because in, in Alabama, you had a, a leftist interrupt you um, and she said that she she's not really arguing with what you're saying, but she knows what you stand for. Is it was the exact verbiage that she gave the reporter on the scene. What upset you about what he said up there? Well, it's more what I know than he because I know what he has stood for. He's against DEI. I absolutely disagree with his view. So she can't she can't disagree with what you're saying, but she's just going to disagree in general. True. Well, you know, I was in Alabama, Chris. Mm -hmm. We know the history of Alabama. There was much more that she wanted to say. What she wanted to say was this black coon has no right to speak to us in the school board. That's what she wanted to, to say. Crazy. However, she, 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 she went ahead and said, you know, I know what he stands for. He's against DEI. You know, a black man can't be against diversity, equity, and inclusion. You know, how dare you? Since it's taught, how, how, how dare I not bow and worship the false triune idol of DEI, right? And, and I call it a false triune idol because it mimics the Trinity. And in the Trinity, you have Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. God desires private worship. And from that private worship, it will spill over into public worship. But when it comes to diversity, equity, and inclusion, they can care less about private worship. They want you to bow in the public school system. They want you to bow in Fortune 500 and Fortune 100 companies. Um, they want you to bow on social media. And if you say anything against the false triune idol of diversity, equity, and inclusion, you will be canceled, deplatformed, censored, and shadow banned. And so she does not want me to address the realities of DEI, but I'm not going to stop. You want to know why? Because DEI is not divinely inspired. It's not a biblical lens. It's not a, a, a true theological lens that we should support. What we should be doing is loving our neighbors as ourselves, period. That's the answer to DEI. Well, and it seems like the goal from the left with when it comes to DEI is is division. And, and they're, yes. they, they, it seems like they're trying to divide us because then we're easier to control. This is true. And, and the people that they want to control the most are blacks. Let's keep them angry about slavery, angry about the Jim Crow era. Let's divide them and make them think that all white people hate them. But keep in mind, there are white liberals who capitalize off of DEI. And when it comes to critical race theory and DEI, you have to say to yourself, well, if critical race theory says that all whites are inherently racist, then why are white liberals pushing it? Because the intent is not to turn blacks against uh, whites in general. The intent is to turn blacks against white Republicans so that they will not vote for the Republican Party. DEI is another noose that has been hung up in society to hang black America. Do you think do you think that black America is starting to see through the farce, though? You know, I see Trump at Chick-fil-A yesterday being embraced by the black community in Atlanta. And I see, you know, the, the polling numbers. Do you think people are waking up to this? Yes. Yes, they're waking up. I'm hearing from blacks every day who are saying, you know what, man? We, we've got it wrong. We've been supporting the Obama-Biden administration. We haven't, we haven't uh, seen any, any beneficial outcomes from doing so. We're witnessing um, the issues with election integrity. We're witnessing um, all-time high inflation. The border is open. Blacks are being replaced with Hispanics. And we're witnessing 
criminal, illegal aliens. You know, some people call them asylum seekers and newcomers. That's a lie. <laughs> New, criminal, newcomers, illegal. newcomers is my favorite. Un- <laughs> unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah, new, newcomers. They're, they're criminal, illegal aliens. They're coming into this country. And in states like New York, they're telling minorities, they're, hey, slide over. Uh, uh, allow a criminal, illegal, illegal alien to come in and live, live with you, and we'll pay you. And we'll also put nearly $53 million on debit cards and give money to these criminal, illegal aliens. Blacks are beginning to see what is taking place, but also a critical place where black America is beginning to see the light on is that school choice is the most transformative way to rid the poverty uh, spirit from the black community. It's through education, but white liberals and the, 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 the left, they hate school choice. There was a time in this country where blacks were trapped in the public school system. And today we are locked out, all right? We're, we're locked out of the access to school choice. And so what we're dealing with today is an intentional plan to keep us from accessing school choice, which allows us to go to private schools and better systems and charter schools that can provide more opportunity for us. I love it, John. So a lot of people are asking me, how can we get you to come to Tennessee? They want you in Sumner County. They want you in Rutherford County. They want you at our school board meetings. How can people reach out to you and get you to join us here in the fight in Tennessee? Hey, I definitely want to come. Matter of fact, I was talking to someone today about uh, earlier this morning, rather about coming to Tennessee. Um, Go to I know God dot us and request me there i need to do a tour in tennessee and and hit several school board meetings and maybe have some events where i can um, meet with individuals and speak there i'm also in the process of working on a documentary on getting the cyclone 400 program off the ground so if you want to partner with me in tennessee and do some major things for the kingdom Go to iknowgod.us and support and send your information over so that we can get in contact. Reverend John Amachuku, man, thank you so much for doing what you're doing. I, I truly appreciate the work you're doing out there. I know it's hard work. I know that you're traveling all the time. Um, but what you're doing is honestly making so much change. So I just want to thank you. Hey, thank you so much, Chris. Uh, Rev Woo Truth on Twitter and Instagram. John Amachuku, he's one of the best. Uh, thank you again. What's your website one more time, John? I know God dot U.S. It's I, after my last name. My last name is Amachuku. Amachuku, I'm sorry. Amachuku means, Amachuku means I know God. So I know God dot U.S. I love it. Thank you so much. Uh, I appreciate you calling to the show. We'll have you on again, all right? Okay. Take care. Hey, take care. Uh, Reverend John Amachukwu, he's one of the best. I know God.us. A lot of people on the Members Nutrition Tech Sign are saying we, we want him at our school board meeting. 6436 said, Chris, let us know when he comes to Murfreesboro. Yep. Yeah. I will. I mean, I, I'm getting texts. People want him uh, in Sumner County. People want him in Rutherford County. I, I am sure that I am missing some of these. I'm getting, we, we got a bunch of texts during that segment. Rev Woo Truth on Twitter and Instagram. If you want to watch his videos of how he goes into these school board meetings and equip yourself to go into these school board meetings because we are absolutely in a battle. Uh, and I got another way for you to equip yourself. It's actually coming to uh, the JW Marriott in downtown Nashville. April 19th and 20th, I mean, it's right around the corner, the Learn Right Summit. I know there's so many parents out there that want to empower themselves with knowledge and tools to be able to advocate for your kids' educational needs, and you're going to be able to learn how to do that at this year's Learn Right Summit. So the Learn Right Summit, again, April 19th and 20th, JW Marriott, downtown Nashville, Learn Right Summit is going to be this gathering which is designed exclusively for passionate parents who 
who want to elevate the education system. It's designed for people that want to get involved in the school board or active school board members. You're going to be able to immerse yourself in many insightful discussions, collaborative workshops, and, and thought-provoking panels that'll range from school safety to the transgender ideology being pushed on children, including those books we were just talking about. And then also at this conference, you're going to be able to forge these connections and build your network. One of the things that the the left does is they organize. And, and we have been falling behind in that aspect for many, many years. So the, what the Learn Right Summit is going to do is going to help you build those connections with other people attending the summit. And you're going to establish that network of support and collaboration. That way you have your army beyond the summit. Uh, you're going to engage in open dialogues, exchange ideas, build those alliances. And if you're if you're looking to be a school board member, this is for you. The summit is going to provide a dedicated space for candidates to present a vision, discuss and connect. You're going to get feedback. You're going to get insight amongst like minded community members. Plus, and this is the other thing I, I lead with this because I think that this is the most important aspect of the Learn Right Summit is learning and building your network, but there's going to be some really great speakers there as well, from Riley Gaines to Mark Green to Byron Donalds and more. It's the Learn Right Summit, April 19th and 20th at the JW Marriott, downtown Nashville. You can get your tickets right now, leadershipinstitute.org slash learnright24. I know it's a mouthful. Let me say it one more time. leadershipinstitute.org slash learn right 24 if you use the promo code learn right 24 you get 25 percent off tickets one more time leadership institute.org slash learn right 24 
OJ Simpson has passed away. Details and reaction at 1030 on Super Talk 99.7 WTN. Thank you, Ken Weaver. Getting a lot of reaction from our interview with Reverend John Amachukwu on the Members Nutrition text line. Everybody's uh, reaching out saying, I want him to come. Can, can he come to Franklin? <laughs> That's what BJ wants to know. Can he, can he come to a Franklin County School Board meeting? So I sent the link. Sumner County, Rutherford County, everybody wants him. I understand. When, when you get a, a strong guy like John who is not afraid to speak the truth with that kind of passion and, and intensity, it, it hits a chord. John in Nashville wants to talk about the trans ideology that's being pushed on kids. What's up, John? Good morning. How are you? I'm good. How are you, sir? Uh, doing well, doing well. Just wanted to give you a couple examples. Uh, my kids frequent the uh, public library system in Nashville, and there are, there are multiple prominent displays supporting transgender, uh, LBTQI, whatever the alphabet is currently. Um, but recently I was there, and there's actually a family discussion uh, flyer for zero to two-year-olds that basically lists, notice if you use he or she, even when gender is unknown, practice using gender-neutral pronouns like they, them for toys, animals, and new people. You can also change gender pronouns in books you read for train conductors and so on. What? Talk about what you love about your bodies. This is in the kids section in the public library system in Green Hills. It's unreal. I mean, there's there's a uh, there's there's a public library in Murphy, Murfreesboro uh, that I go to. I think it's right by City Hall, and uh, they they had some stuff like that too. They had a a uh, trans employee working the kids section. I, I I just decided to stop going there. You know, it's it, it's crazy. Um, it, it stinks that we have to seed that ground, but it's like what what else can you do? Well, I, I think that's I I, I you know. I disagree. I, th I don't think we need to continue to seed the ground. I think what we need to do is publicly, publicly, like the Reverend said, show up, demand change, demand that these things are not exposed to our children. Yeah, we're no. taxpayers. Yeah. We support these institutions, and 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 I think it's 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 too easy to say I'm going to seed the ground. I'm not going to fight the fight. It's not worth it. Um, and and I think they know that. I think they shout louder. They show up more. I think what people need to do is show up, be present, and demand change. I, I love it, John. When when do we start, man? Are are you are you going to start I, getting vocal? Are we going to start organizing? How do we how do we organize these I, protests, John? Absolutely. I mean, absolutely. I'll be happy to share my contact information with you off the air. And and look, I've got four children under nine. We homeschool our children, not particularly for religious reasons, but 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 for for multiple reasons, and this being one of those. I totally hear you, and I think you're making the right choice, John. Shoot me a text on the Members Nutrition text line, and then uh, we'll link up, or you can shoot me a DM on Twitter, at Chris Hand on Air. Uh, if you want to protest this kind of stuff in the libraries, I'm all for it, man. Absolutely. Thank you. Hey, Thanks pre for appreciate you, John. It's 1031 on Supertalk 99.7 WTN. I'm Ken Weaver with your top stories. Full forecast in two minutes. O.J. Simpson, the former football star who became better known as the defendant in one of the most watched murder trials of the 20th century, has died. Simpson's family made the announcement on X. He was 76 years old. Despite his success as a two-time All-American halfback at USC and his career in the NFL, the 1994 murder of Simpson's ex-wife, Nicole Brown Simpson, and her friend, Robert Ronald Goldman would haunt Simpson for life. The world was captivated as he went on trial for murder. If it doesn't fit, you must acquit. He was acquitted, but his problems were not over. In 2008, Simpson was found guilty of a hotel room armed robbery in Las Vegas. Yeah, he spent nine years in prison after that conviction in Nevada. Again, Simpson dead at the age of 76. That's the latest news. Weather is next. I'm Ken Weaver, WTN News.
Super Talk 99.7 WTN. I, I'm still getting tons of messages about uh, Reverend John Amachukwu. People are sending me his Instagram post now. This guy's based. He's an absolute lion. So uh, he's he's welcome on the show anytime. Huge fan, huge fan. Uh, so we, we've had a lot going on uh, in the news. I mean, the, the breaking news this morning, O.J. Simpson is dead at 76. Wild. Wild. Uh, Trump has put out a video. Uh, we, me and me and Rev Wu talked about uh, how they're calling the illegal aliens newcomers. You know, who doesn't like a newcomer? Well, <laughs> you know, in, in Massachusetts and in other states, they've said, hey, why don't you take a newcomer into your home? You know, who wouldn't want who wouldn't want to uh, share your home with a newcomer? You gonna take in a newcomer? So what that they're part of a Venezuelan street gang? What are you? What are you? Some kind of bigot? Just let a newcomer in. Be kind. Spread love, not hate. Right? That's what they tell you. Uh, well, apparently, uh, people heard that message and went, yeah, hard pass, hard pass, not going to do it. Well, Michigan, uh, the, the the mitten state, the the great state of Michigan, the, Gretchen Whitmer, the, the highly esteemed uh, leftist radical governor up there, she's come up with a new plan for newcomers to get you to take them into your home. She's offering $500 a month. Five hundred dollars a month if you if you take in a newcomer. Who who wouldn't want that deal, right? Uh, well, President Trump has put out a video where he's talking about this newcomer illegal alien scam that's happening in Michigan, and uh, he's I don't know how do I put this? Not a fan. Uh, uh, yeah, I would think. I think I'd say not a fan. In Michigan, radical left Democrat Governor Gretchen Whitmer is handing out $500 a month in cash to anyone who accepts illegal aliens into your homes. Isn't that nice? She's calling the scam the newcomer rental subsidy. In other words, she's calling illegal immigrants, uh, many coming from jails, many coming from mental institutions, many are terrorists. She's ca calling them newcomers. Isn't that wonderful? That's my. I love that he goes. Isn't that nice? Isn't that wonderful? Would you would you take in a uh, a criminal newcomer who could be a gang member, perhaps a human trafficker, a murderer, somebody that was freed from an insane asylum and then sent up to the U.S. southern border because their home country doesn't want them any longer? Five hundred dollars a month. Who wouldn't take that deal? And it's all funded by federal taxpayer dollars distributed by crooked Joe Biden. He's the most crooked president we've ever had, and he's by far the worst president we've ever had. In other words, Biden and Whitmer are selecting and stealing your money to give free housing to illegal alien migrants and then asking you to quarter these foreign armies, and that's what they are, they're armies. They're coming in at levels that we've never seen ever in our country before but quarter these foreign armies in the spare bedroom in a spare bedroom in your home. Would you, would you want that? I mean, you hear the news stories about these illegal aliens and, and what they're doing. It's crazy. It's crazy. We, we talked yesterday about the Venezuelan gangs in America. There was, there was a murder in California from an illegal alien uh, where he he dismembered dismembered a, a body he was arrested for this this is this is who uh, Gretchen Whitmer is asking you to take into your home for just uh, for for the reasonable amount of $500 per month an 18-year-old undocumented migrant from El Salvador has been arrested in Mendota for murdering a man and dismembering his body. Fresno County Sheriff's deputies say the teen who has not been named because he was 17 at the time of the alleged killing dismembered 25-year-old Fraley Hernandez. It's amazing to me, though, uh, they, they say he's undocumented. 
He was a teen. We can't mention his name. Again, the the left-wing radical media would never, ever, ever not mention the name of a teen if it was a conservative. And we have many such examples when it comes to Kyle Rittenhouse and Nicholas Sandman, everyone in between. If you're a conservative, they have no problem outing you if you're a teen. But if you're an illegal alien who dismembers and murders a man, well, gosh, we wouldn't want to be insensitive. Right? Can't be insensitive. And in Michigan, they want you to take somebody like that into your home, into your spare bedroom, uh, as President Trump puts it, where your children are in the room next door. But quarter these foreign armies in the spare bedroom that you happen to have next to your children. I don't know. Somehow it doesn't sound like a very good idea, considering many of these people came from prisons and jails. They came from mental institutions and insane asylums. Many are terrorists that are coming into our country totally unchecked and totally unvetted. Doesn't sound like a good idea to have them next to your children, but that's Biden for you. Yeah, that is, that is Biden for you. That is the Democrats for you. Would, would you like that? Who wouldn't want an extra $500 a month, right? Worth the risk, right? T totally, totally worth the risk. But what this really boils down to is they're going to take tax dollars from you. Then they're going to give you those tax dollars back. So you take in these newcomers. And it's because they care more about illegal aliens than they care about their own citizens. 100%. I lived in Michigan. It's not the best place. Some of the highest gas taxes in the country, if not the highest, if I recall correctly. Some of the worst roads in the country. It is so expensive to live there. Detroit is falling apart. Uh, last time I checked, Flint doesn't have clean water still. How long has that been? Uh, and and they're, they're going to take your tax dollars. Instead of fixing the problems that they have in Michigan, they're going to... Uh, they're going to give free housing to illegal aliens because they care more about illegals than they care about American citizens. Biden, Whitmer, and the radical left Democrats care more about illegal aliens than about American citizens or our military, our vets. They care much more about illegal aliens. Thanks to their inflation disaster, you can't afford to buy a house. You can't afford the increase in rent. Yet they're taking your money and giving it to so-called newcomers, it's such a nice name, who illegally charged across our border. They came in illegally into our country. They're called newcomers. They're not called illegal immigrants. They're not called illegal aliens. This is a scandal, and this is a disgusting insult to hardworking American taxpayers. I will end it on day one. And I think calling it a scandal and calling it an insult is one of the nicest ways to put it. It feels downright treasonous. Who voted for these policies? Did you did you vote for these policies in America? Does this make America safer when we're standing on what is it? It's thirty four trillion in debt right now. Thirty four trillion. We're gonna we're gonna have taxpayer dollars go to help illegal aliens. I'm I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I'm under the impression, and maybe they fixed it already, I'm under the impression we have homeless veterans in this country. I, I'm under the impression, and maybe they fixed it. Maybe they fixed it. We have homeless children in this country. American citizens. And they house illegal aliens on military bases. They house illegal aliens in your home. They house illegal aliens in taxpayer-funded shelters. In Chicago, there's a migrant facility, and I saw it with my own eyes. It's amazing. They have this nice migrant facility. It's for the migrants. We have to be caring. Directly across the street is a tent city for American citizens. What is going on? And they're arguing, they're arguing in Congress, should we get FISA redone? You know, we want to be able to spy on American citizens. This country's upside down right now. And they're wasting our tax dollars day in and day out.
It's infuriating. It is absolutely infuriating. Homeless veterans, nah, don't worry about them. They'll be all right. Homeless kids, nah, what? they're American citizens. Who cares? Who cares? Newcomers, please roll out the red carpet. Let's take care of them. Let's give them debit cards with money. Let's give them cell phones. Let's, let's buy them food. We can put them in a hotel. Let's do whatever we can for them. $34 trillion in debt. What's, what's, a, what's a few more million? What's a billy on top, right? But Trump says in this video, you know, there's going to be a difference when he's president. When I'm president, instead of asking you to cram illegal aliens into your homes, I'll tell the illegal aliens that they must not come into our country. They have to go back to their homes in their countries. One way or another, we will send them back to their own countries. We will have the largest and most efficient deportation effort in the history of our country, bigger than that of Dwight Eisenhower, our president from a long time ago. Thank you very much. Sign me up. Sign me up. If everything was perfect, sunshine and rainbows in this country, I wouldn't be a fan of this. We have the least secure border in history. We have known terrorists coming across the southern border. We have fentanyl pouring into this country, killing American citizens. We have homeless American citizens. And the Democrats want to use your tax dollars to house newcomers. I'm sorry. That's criminal and that's treasonous. Calling it any less is is a lie. And again, the border's so open, the fentanyl just keeps pouring in. Take a look at these photos out of Arizona. CBP at the port of entry in Nogales, Arizona, reporting they seized 1.1 million fentanyl pills in four days, hidden in different smuggling incidents, including hidden in a microwave, a deflated bounce house, and the doors and firewall of a vehicle. Then take a look at these photos. Border Patrol reporting this last weekend alone, their agent seized 270 pounds of hard narcotics, including coke, meth, and fentanyl. Coke, meth, fentanyl, just a million fentanyl pills. No big deal, right? Don't worry about it. Stop asking so many questions. Everything is fine, the TV tells us. And, and you know, we're going to get, we're, we'll get wall to wall OJ coverage on all the major news networks for this weekend. That, that's what they're going to do. Meanwhile, American citizens are losing their lives. No big deal. It is infuriating. The average American can't afford to pay their rent. They can't afford to buy groceries. They can't afford to live in this country. But, you know, hey, if you need a little extra spending cash, here's $500 uh, if you're in Michigan to house a newcomer. I don't get I don't get angry often. In fact, I, I try to I try to keep it as lighthearted as I can. Because if you get too angry, you find yourself getting black pilled. But this this pisses me off. When American citizens are neglected in our country every single day, and then they take our tax dollars and they decide to use it for illegal aliens, you should be pissed off too. It's 1051 on Super Talk 99.7 WTN. Hey, it's Chris Hand for my friends at MembersNutrition.com. Listen, your health is your responsibility. Uh, nobody's going to take care of that for you. You need to do it yourself. One of the ways you do it is by putting the best things in your body. I know it's tough when the air we breathe is toxic, the food we eat is processed garbage, and you're building up those toxins in your body. There's a way that you can flush those toxins out. MembersNutrition.com is bringing you the Youthful Cleanse by Daily Defense. It's the, it's the best way to jumpstart you into a healthy lifestyle by flushing out all those toxins you're accumulating from the air, the food, and your stress. And I understand it's easy to be stressed out in America in 2024. 
but take your health into your own hands. Start with the Youthful Cleanse by Daily Defense. Then find other affordable and quality supplements and vitamins that you need at a fraction of the normal retail cost at membersnutrition.com. And one of the best things is... All of these vitamins and supplements are made right here in the USA, not way overseas in China. They're made here in America. You can't say that about the vitamins and supplements you're buying at the big box stores. In fact, you probably can't tell where they're made at all. But I can almost guarantee they're not made here. But at membersnutrition.com, I can guarantee that they're made here, no matter what type of supplement you're in the market for. Immunity, weight loss detox like the cleanse, just general men's or women's health, relaxation supplements. They have it all at membersnutrition.com. It is time for you to take your health into your own hands. It starts at membersnutrition.com. I take the Youthful Cleanse by Daily Defense. I take an energy supplement for membersnutrition.com. You should be purchasing your vitamins and supplements from membersnutrition.com. Janet Yellen will say she doesn't want to decouple from China. I think as American citizens, we can decide for ourselves. It's time to decouple from China, and it starts by buying products made in the U.S. Do it today. Get your vitamins and supplements from membersnutrition.com. That's membersnutrition.com.
We have more reaction and uh, also a, a look back at the past 30 years in the life of O.J. Simpson, who passed away today. Details coming up at 11 on Super Talk 99.7 WTN. Thank you, Ken Weaver. I'm getting reaction on the members' nutrition text line about the, the Michigan plan. $500 a month if you want to house an illegal alien. 0830 said, give me a veteran for $500 a month. Amen. They wouldn't do that, though, uh, because they don't they don't care about you. And I bet you they're using COVID money, aren't they? Probably. Probably, yeah. Probably all that COVID money just sitting there, 20, raising inflation. I know it. I know it. 2932 had an interesting thought. First time texter said, I think Michigan's just buying votes from Middle Eastern people. They're, they're getting their relatives that cross the border illegal and then uh, paying them to house them. Hmm. I wonder what the breakdown looks like of people opting into that program. I wonder. Hmm. I doubt we'll ever get the numbers, even if we ask. Even if even if we had power and we could demand it, well, I doubt Mayorkas would give us the info. Spoiler alert. We're, we're, we're never going to know. It's 11 o'clock on Super Talk 99.7 WTN. Eleven o'clock on the dot. I'm Ken Weaver with your top stories. Got the four forecast in two minutes. And O.J. Simpson, the former football star who became better known as the defendant in one of the most watched murder trials of the 20th century, has died. Simpson's family making the announcement on X. The statement on X reads: On April 10th, our father, Orenthal James Simpson, succumbed to his battle with cancer. He was surrounded by his children and grandchildren during this time of transition. His family asks that you please respect their wishes for privacy and grace. And it's signed, The Simpson Family. Just two months ago, Simpson posted a video denying claims that he was in hospice care and close to death. You talking about hospice? <laughs> no, I, I'm not in any hospice. I don't know who put that out there. Jason Nathanson, ABC News, Los Angeles. Simpson spent nine years in prison after a robbery conviction in Nevada. Again, 76 years old. Inflation proving difficult to shake as the Labor Department's producer price index. The measure of inflation pressure before it reaches consumers rose 2.1% in March over the year before. The data coupled with yesterday's consumer price index offer more evidence progress against inflation isn't working, raising doubts about whether and when the Fed might cut interest rates. And right now in our nation's capital, the Biden administration's put rules in place that will make some 20,000 firearm sellers using online advertisements, gun shows and other means to be licensed. Attorney General Merrick Garland is saying today in a video provided by the Department of Justice, this change is possible because of the 2022 Bipartisan Safer Communities Act by clarifying how firearms are sold, whether it's a gun show or fire sale. That's when dealers who go out of business or lose their license go about liquidating their inventory. This regulation is a historic step in the Justice Department's fight against gun violence. Garland says the DOG is confident the new rule will stand up to court challenges. And that's the latest news. Weather is next. I'm Ken Weaver, WTN News.
1105 on Super Talk 99.7 WTN. My name is Chris Hand. Hope you are having the best Thursday. Mac Mori producing Ken Weaver in the newsroom. You got a behind the box score coming out? Just released yesterday, actually. Oh my gosh. What did you cover? Um, Tell me Jamel Hill. <laughs> we did not go into Jamel Hill. I'm Why sorry. Why not? I'm sorry. This was uh this oh, was you keep politics out of sports, <laughs> I and I don't I don't I do. appreciate that. I do. This is purely purely <laughs> purely sports. Uh we got into uh analytics. Everyone talks about analytics in football. No one actually knows what it is, or most people don't. And so and the future of analytics in football is going to ramp up rapidly. So I had a professional data scientist who also is my brother. Come on. Your brother's a professional data scientist? Yeah, d- teaches AI courses. Does yeah, he's what? dude, it's he's so smart. It's insane. Why am I just learning this? <laughs> I know. <laughs> Kept that on and, the DL. And also, which which kid in the line was he? He's the first. That makes sense. Yeah, he's the first. That tracks. Yeah. That tracks. Homeschool K through 12. He's the smartest. Yeah. Yep. Homeschool kids. Homeschool kids. <laughs> I didn't know that we could have had a data scientist. Yeah, we, we on got here. one waiting in the wings. <laughs> What's his name? Sean. He just leapfrogged you of my favorite <laughs> Maury's. <did>, no. <laughs> Mom, Sean, <laughs> then maybe me. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely, Mama Morris. Yeah, Mama Morris, yeah. Yeah. Undefeated. That goes without saying. Yeah. Undefeated. Go. Uh, all right. So, behind the box score is available wherever podcasts are. Yeah. Mac does a great job. Appreciate it. Uh, he has tons of sports takes. I have some sports takes that you don't have. Hit me. All right. So, Jamel Hill. Did you hear about Jamel Hill? F- faintly. All right. Very disappointed in her. Uh, Jamel Hill. It, she's she's a former ESPN analyst, right? Yeah. She was fired. What did she get fired for? Besides being terrible in low ratings? Gosh, yeah. What did she? She said, did something. She, something controversial. She she tweeted or said something, and they had to. So she was. Uh, she's very upset. Oh yeah. She's very upset. This. She's very upset. Which is uh, uncharacteristic of her, I'm sure. <laughs> I'm sure that she walks around. It's like all of her takes. And, and yeah, in everyday life, I'm sure Jamel Hill is very kind, very, very... Uh, Not bitter. Easygoing. <laughs> so she's a former ESPN analyst because nobody wanted her around. Uh, she's calling Dwayne The Rock Johnson uh, a political coward after his decision to publicly refuse to endorse Joe Biden for re-election in 2024. She's calling him a coward. It blows my mind because in this day and age, the easiest thing to do, the easiest thing to do would be endorse Joe Biden. You'd get the accolades from the media. You know, Rock is trying to make his way into Hollywood. You'd get all the roles. It's just the the entire ecosystem of Hollywood and mainstream media leans left. So... I actually, I, I know you're going to be shocked. I disagree with Jamel Hill. I think that it is, it is quite the opposite from being a political coward in 2024 to publicly say you're not going to endorse Joe Biden. I, I think it actually takes a lot of bravery. It, it, if you wanted to call him a political coward, maybe the take would have been, I'm staying out of politics. That'd be politically coward. Or you go with the herd and you say, yeah, I'm with Joe Biden. I'm not going to elect an orange man who's a racist. That, that's, that's politically coward. But she somehow got on, uh, on the Dan Lebitard show. Is that, is that still on ESPN or is that yeah, on? Yeah, I think, yeah, still ESPN. So, I mean, so they're not too tired of her. Uh, and, and she claimed that Johnson's refusal to support Biden was the same as an endorsement of Trump. She said... Even though he said he was going to keep his ballot to himself, he actually didn't. Because there's only one other person who will be the nominee. So unless you plan to write in yourself, you've made your decision. You plan to vote for xenophobia and bigotry and all of these other things that you claim to stand against. That's what she said. It is such a beaten horse to say that Trump is bigotry and xenophobia. I mean, I played audio earlier from from Trump at an Atlanta Chick-fil-A and it's like uh, people don't believe the media anymore people see that Trump is not a racist 
they loved him in Atlanta. How you doing, Trump? I'm doing good. I love you, man. I love you, man. <laughs> it's, a, it's a predominantly black crowd. Loving Trump. Loving Trump. There was somebody that brought up how Trump supported HBCUs, historically black college and universities. Uh, he signed them a, a long-term funding plan. Before Trump, they had to come year after year after year begging for money. But Jamel Hill says if you don't endorse Biden, you've made your decision. You plan to vote for xenophobia and bigotry. The, I, I wonder if, if, like, can he sue her? Can Trump sue this woman for defamation? Like, the, the fact that they get on TV and they spread these lies is infuriating. But that wasn't it. She said, if The Rock wants to stop the division, then he shouldn't at all make it seem like he aligned with the side that is pushing only division. That's their entire agenda. They have no policy. The entire thing is that uh, they have, that the entire thing that they have is to get you to hate somebody else that you perceive as lower on the totem pole than you. I disagree entirely. We actually have a platform in the Republican Party. Uh, secure the border. Stop foreign wars. Uh, spend taxpayer money on taxpayers. Radical. Radical. I know. I know. Uh, it, it's actually the Biden regime that doesn't have a political platform. The Biden regime is trying to make the election about abortion. The Biden regime is trying to make the election about racism. That's what they do. They, they, they drive the wedge with emotional arguments. But the former ESPN host, Jamel Hill, says that, uh, you know, she has nothing against The Rock personally. I don't, I don't have anything against him personally. <laughs> Good man. <laughs> but he's supporting xenophobia and bigotry. Great guy. Great guy. She actually said, I love Dwayne Johnson. I love him. But he stands for everything I hate <laughs> and everything that's wrong in this country, and he's dividing us. Yeah, she's talking about division, but then, which is obviously a, a rampant issue in our country. Uh, yep. we, we, every side, everyone can recognize that. But then to blame that on one side is quite li complaining about quite literally what you're doing. You're doing what you're talking about. And I love how self-important she is. Like, oh my gosh, did you hear what Jamel mm. Hill said? Yeah. Like, I almost didn't even want to cover this. Uh, yeah, to give her the time of day. Yeah. But I I, I retweeted this the other day. Hi Res the rapper who does all the AI Trump yeah. songs. I love I love that guy. He tweeted out, uh, well, because Mark Hamill announced he'd be supporting President Biden over Donald Trump. Uh, Luke Skywalker. Luke Skywalker, yeah. But, so he quote tweeted it. And he said, Breaking. Nobody cares what Hollywood celebrities think about politics anymore in 2024. I hope you enjoyed it the last few elections. We all don't care anymore. Hollywood is filled with false idols. Your time is up. Your puppets, your sellouts. Bingo. Even, listen, people will endorse Trump and we'll go, oh, cool, welcome in. Come on in. But, like, if The Rock comes out and goes, I'm voting for Biden, I'm not going to go, oh, man. I have to rethink this. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, I don't care. I don't care. I gotta rethink I've, I've made my decision. Jamel Hill says, oh, you're supporting bigotry and xenophobia. I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. I have made my decision. But you're supporting xenophobia. All right, define xenophobia. They also they also said Trump was uh, xenophobic when he said the the virus came from China. That's what he said. He said it came from China. Oh, the xenophobia. Where did that where did that virus come from? Do you know anybody? Oh, that's right. <laughs> that's right. Unbelievable. And everybody loves him. I found why she was uh, initially suspended from ESPN. She left ESPN, but she was suspended twice. Why? Um, well, she opened up about leaving ESPN's, and I'm, you're going to find this hilarious, so I had to say it. Jamel Hill opens up about leaving ESPN's, quote, conservative culture. What? <laughs> what? Get out of here. Get out. Oh, isn't that great? I thought that was pretty rich. Conservative <laughs> culture? Yeah, it wasn't a good fit for the Sports Center culture. Definitely not a good fit for the management that was overseeing Sports Center at the time. I got tired. I got really tired of fighting every day to be myself. Oh, they're always trying to hold the black woman down at ESPN, aren't they? <laughs>
<laughs> the culture. And and remind you, uh, Sage Steele. This this happened the other day. She revealed that uh, this is this is the, the conservative culture, the conservative culture at uh, the conservative culture at ESPN. They they had an opening day interview with Joe Biden, and they they scripted every single word for Sage Steele. Remember this? Here as we get set for. A wonderful day in sports, opening day for America's national pastime. This is about two months after he took office. Um, that was an interesting experience in its own right, because it was so structured. And I was told, you will say every word that we write out. You will not deviate from the script and go to the word. Like every single question was scripted. Everything, you know, it was probably scripted with a conservative lean, I'm sure. Knowing they, ESPN. They probably, yeah, the <laughs> script probably included, <laughs> why did you steal the 2020 election? I'm sure it's like, don't deviate. People want answers. So she got, so so she left it because. Uh, so yeah, she was suspended and then she left later on, I guess, because of the overwhelming conservative culture. But yeah, she was, sus <laughs> <laughs> she was suspended for two weeks because. Yeah, she called Trump a white supremacist. That, that tracks. Yeah, so they, they suspended so now, her. So, so that conservative culture is now having her as a guest on her shows to say if... So you get you get suspended for calling Trump a white supremacist. You leave because of this, this, oh my gosh, the patriarchy, the conservative culture, right? Then you come back as a guest to say, if you don't support Biden, you support bigotry and xenophobia. <laughs> Sticking it to the man. Oh, I forgot. Okay. Uh, yeah, okay. I'm just making sure. I think, yeah, Dan Lebetard no longer on ESPN. That's my fault. My fault. That where was, is, couple, that where, was that a couple years ago, I think. Um, Trying to find it. Yeah, I, I haven't watched it in so long. SI. What is that? Sports Illustrated? Sports Illustrated, which is... Didn't they fire everybody? I guess they kept the podcast? I don't know. Where can I watch this? I mean, yeah, YouTube, six days ago, that's where you can find it. I just want to know what network. Interesting. Isn't Dan Levitar the guy that had his dad on the show all the time? Yeah. Bet you his dad's voting for Trump. Yeah, I wouldn't, I, I don't, yeah, I wouldn't be, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, I don't know about any of their political leanings. I used to love that show. Him and Stu Gatz were great. Yep. Uh, I mean, it, it's just crazy. DraftKings. It's just like, when The Rock endorsed Joe Biden in 2020, Jamel Hill wasn't upset that he decided to share who he was voting for. But like when he chooses not to endorse Joe Biden, now his thoughts and opinions don't matter. Blows my mind. So I, I wanted to make sure I got to that because I know uh, you stay away from politics on Behind the Box Score. I do. We go strictly numbers. Analytics. Analytics, man. With an analytic scientist. <laughs> it's exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so I got other sports news. You want other sports news? Hit me. So you know that there was that record-breaking fundraiser, right? For Trump. For, 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 for Trump. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Uh, the Jets co-owner was there. Yeah, this was like a millionaire, billionaire frenzy. It seemed ah. like. It's, it's billionaires are supporting them. <laughs> so uh, the the co-owner of the Jets was there, and he gave he gave an inside look at, at what the fundraiser was like. Uh, spoiler alert: no mention of xenophobia or bigotry. And I think the world will be a safer and better place. There'll be less crime. Um, he's extremely compassionate. People don't know that. He's extremely funny. I think people are starting to appreciate his sense of humor. Mm -hmm. He's talking about Trump, obviously, and how, how he was at the fundraiser. And uh, he just impressed all of us once again. And I think, yeah, the overwhelming thought was, yeah, this is just the beginning for us. Everybody in that room was ready to step up hard. Yeah, it is, it is just the beginning. And you know what? It's the beginning of the attacks, too. We're going to see the attacks on Trump ramp up. We, we've already seen the animal hoax. We've seen the bloodbath hoax. Get ready. We are coming down to the final stretch. We have six months left. Six months. It, it seems like a very short time, but it's like 
The days are going to be long. The months are going to be short. And we're going to be in November before we know it. Dude, it's already April. Dude. Like, come on. Are you hype? I'm hype. Bingo. Need let's more, let's need more hype hotkey. Yeah, we I'll need... get one for the election, a hype hotkey. Yeah, just something that's like hype. Hype. <laughs> get Dr. Dre going, yeah. I like yeah, that. Yeah, I like that. I like that's that. That's great. We need that. That's based. Yeah, we need that. Ken Weaver. He... Why don't we consult Ken more? Yeah, you're right. What are we doing? <laughs> Why are we leaving me to the creative ideas this here? This is a missed opportunity. <laughs> Ken, let's switch spots. Yeah. Matt can do news. I need I need you to bring in the creativity. <laughs> it's 1121 on Super Talk 99.7 WTN. Hey, it's Chris Hand from my friends at United Structural Systems. It was raining earlier. It's going to rain more. It's that time of year where the rain is falling. And if you're having waterproofing issues, you're going to notice. And one of the ways you notice is you'll see standing water in your crawl space, wet basement walls, cracks in your basement floors. That's your house trying to tell you something. And you should call my friends at United Structural Systems to come take a look at what's going on at your home. If you're getting that water coming in, you can't wish it away. But USS will come to your home and create a custom solution for you. Maybe it is total crawl space encapsulation. Maybe it's just waterproofing needs. Whatever it is, they can do it for you, and they'll come up with a unique plan for your home. They've been doing this since 1994. They aren't going anywhere. They're your waterproofing experts. And again, it's that time of year where if you need waterproofing help, you're going to find out. Uh, USS will come to your home. They won't leave until the work is done and you are satisfied and you will be satisfied. They've been doing it again since 1994 and they have 25,000 satisfied customers to back them up. So if you're having waterproofing issues, call USS today. You will not be disappointed. 615-488-7855. Waterproofing is what they specialize in, but they can do so much more from foundation repair to sinkhole repair, basement wall realignment, and more. USS, 615-488-7855. Call United Structural Systems today. 615-488-7855 or online at USSTN.com.
Just ahead of lunchtime, we've got a crash on 65 southbound in Goodlettsville. It is just past Long Hollow Pike. The right lane is blocked. And we're going to take a look at the life and times of an all-American hero turned American pariah who has passed away. These stories are more at 1130 on Super Talk 997 WTN. Thank you, Ken Weaver. It is Super Talk 997 WTN. My name is Chris Hand. You can find me on Twitter, True Social, Instagram, all are the same. And I'll follow you back on all of them. At Chris Hand on air. At Chris Hand on air. Uh, Mac Morey's on Twitter as well. At Mac J Morey 25. Getting a lot of reaction on the members nutrition text line about Jamel Hill. A lot of people are saying just because The Rock didn't endorse Biden, she's assuming he's voting for Trump. What about RFK? It's true. But tons of texts. What about Cornell West? <laughs> <laughs> right? I get emails from Cornell. Do you really? <laughs> I do. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> He announced a running mate today. Did you see that? Uh, I'll have to go back and check my email. Yeah, check your email. You got to check. <laughs> uh, I don't know why I get emails from Cornell, but I do. Well, it's like Chris used to get texts from Nikki. Yeah, uh, yeah that's favorite. right. Yeah, that's. I'd be like, stop texting. Stop my texting wife me. Is next to me. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> I'm at uh, home. I can't. I can't be getting texts from other women. <laughs> and then, and my wife knew about all the rumors that she cheated on her husband. It just wasn't a good look. <laughs> it just wasn't a good look. Uh, yeah, Cornell West announced uh, his his running mate, uh, Melina Abdullah. All right. So, I mean, it checks out. She's a professor and a racial justice advocate. Couple of professors running for president. Boom. That's exactly what That's we need. Exactly. <laughs> That's the recipe. That's, that's, a, that's a winning, <laughs> a winning ticket. Uh, I also think that maybe she didn't bring up RFK Jr. because uh, the Democrat establishment just in, instructed them all to just, shh, don't, 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 don't talk about RFK. Don't. That's probably what, things not to say. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I still get people that text me about RFK all the time. Oh, for sure. I mean... Becoming a little bit more relevant. I think that, listen, I, I, he, he's right on a lot of things. We need to rein in the intelligence agencies. The media is full of liars, uh, and, and they lie to us constantly. The, the government, uh, also full of liars, lies to us constantly. Um, I, I like a lot of his takes on the vaccine industry. I like a lot of his takes on COVID. And then uh, that's pretty much where it ends. He's anti-war. He's anti-war. I'm fine with that. Not a huge fan of war. But that's pretty much, uh, what was that, like four topics? Yeah. Yeah. I'm not a four-issue voter. <laughs> <laughs> you know? <laughs> not going to do that. Uh, so, yeah, Cornell West, uh, Alina Abdullah. I bet. I wonder if anybody even realizes that Cornell West is running for president. Well, I, I knew from the email. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. Well, Ken's going to update us on that email here in the newscast. It's 1130 on Super Talk 99.7 WTN. O.J. Simpson, the former football great who was accused of and ultimately acquitted of the brutal 1994 murders of his ex-wife, Nicole Brown Simpson, and her friend Ron Goldman, has died, according to his family. Here's Rena Roy. Charged with both murders, Simpson's nine-month murder trial was broadcast to millions. We, the jury, in the above entitled action, find the defendant, Orenthal James Simpson, not guilty of the crime of murder. Two years later, sued in civil court by the parents of Nicole Brown Simpson and Ron Goldman, the verdict went the other way. Simpson was found liable for the deaths. His assets were seized and he was ordered to pay $33.5 million in restitution to both victims' families. Though he never paid. He's, he died, that is, at the age of 76. And at Money News, Jim Ryan. Inflation worries continue to rattle Wall Street. Headed into the midday, the Dow Jones had fallen another 212 points to around 38,249. The S&P was down a fraction. The Nasdaq composite had gained three-tenths of one percent. That's the latest news. Weather is Next, I'm Ken Weaver, WTN News.
Super Talk 99.7 WTN. So I got to tell you, I think I was wrong about the conservative culture at uh, ESPN. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. They just stopped their wall-to-wall -wall OJ coverage to go to the Masters. What? Who so, cares about the Masters? I think I think Jamel Hill was right. <laughs> it's just this overwhelming <laughs> conservative culture. <laughs> you know? It's got to be, right? There's no other reason. There'd be nothing. What else what else could it be? It's just uh conservatives in the the, the patriarchy, I guess. <laughs> I don't even know. Patriarchy, I guess. I guess. I guess. It's just a bunch of white guys. Uh. <laughs> we're talking about we're talking about OJ. Conservatives. Gosh. We can't keep letting them get away. With it. <laughs> so, uh, you know, November can't get here soon enough. Uh do you remember do you remember John Tester? He's the he's a Democrat out of Montana. He's a senator. Not familiar. Not familiar. But I just, th this tells me that Biden is really hurting going into November uh, because John Tester, he, just, just a few months back, just a few months back, was shilling for Biden, like absolutely shilling for him. Uh, and, and he said, uh, well, well, I'll just play it. This is, this is how he was selling uh, or in chilling for Biden just, just a couple months back. Joe Biden, when I've been around him, and that's not every day, but when I've been around him, when I've seen him on the news, he's absolutely 100% with it. Mm -hmm. and, uh, uh, and he's got, he's, he's, his recall, his, his uh, cognitive ability, whatever you want to call it. I'm yeah. not a doc, I'm a dirt farmer, but <laughs> yeah. he's, he's fine. And yeah. he's doing a good job. I think folks are making a bigger deal out of it than it is. So this is, this is how I know that Joe Biden is really hurting. Like, because you see the polls, you're not really sure, because you know how polls are. We believe the ones we believe. We, we, we like the ones we like. We don't like the ones we don't like. But a lot of these politicians have internal polling, right? And uh, John Tester, he's a senator in Montana. He is now distan distancing himself from Joe Biden. When just a couple months ago, he was shilling for him, saying that, you know, he's great. He's so smart. Listen to this new ad that Tester uh, is is putting aside fourteen point five million to produce an air in Montana. Okay, and, and tell me if you think this is a good sign for Biden or a bad sign for Biden. When Montanans see a problem, we get to work. John Tester worked with Republicans fighting to shut down the border, target fentanyl traffickers, and add hundreds of new Border Patrol agents. And he fought to stop President Biden from letting migrants stay in America instead of remain in Mexico. John Tester knows defending Montana starts with securing the border. I'm John Tester, and I approve this message to do whatever it takes to keep Montana safe. What a shift. What a shift. The, the ad says he fought to stop President Biden from letting migrants stay in America instead of remain in Mexico. John Tester knows defending Montana starts with securing the border. Just, just a couple months ago, John Tester was saying Biden is so sharp and all of this stuff is exaggerated. And now, uh, because of his internal polling, the external polling, he's like, whoa. I don't want anything to do with that guy. And these are supposed to be people on uh, Joe Biden's team. Of course, you know, I will say uh, the claims in John Tester's ad, they're not truthful. Tester twice voted against amendments that would have provided funds to U.S. Customs and Border Patrol uh, for narcotic and opioid detection activities. Once in 2021 and again in 2022. Uh, the the August 22 amendment that he voted against would have provided 500 million to U.S. Customs and Border Protection for for stopping uh, and, and detecting drugs, and and in March 2021, uh, the one he voted against would have given 300 million from Corona, the the COVID stimmies, uh, the stimmy check funds, to uh, help with that as well. 
And, and then the ad also claims that Tester worked with Republicans to add hundreds of border agents. But in August of 22, Tester was with the Democrats voting against a motion that would have uh, stopped the hiring of 87,000 IRS agents until 18,000 new Border Patrol agents were added. So he's still doing Democrat things. He's still lying. But the fact remains, he is trying to distance himself from Biden as much as he can. The ad also claims that Tester fought to stop President Biden from letting migrants stay in America instead of remain in Mexico. Yet, Tester voted against remain in Mexico policies in the past. Tester uh, twice voted against amendments putting that policy forward. So it, it's pretty wild to watch the Democrats start to eat themselves as they realize uh, this isn't going well at all. On the flip side, uh, conservatives are aligning themselves more and more with Trump because they know that Trump has winning policies, a winning agenda, and momentum. You know, I, I, I've been critical of DeSantis in the past. I think that's fair to say. I didn't like that he was running for president. I thought that he was screwing up his chances for 2028. I thought that uh, 2024 was always going to be Trump's. And, you know, it was. I, I didn't think DeSantis should have should have run. But I will say this. Uh, since then, DeSantis has been doing a lot of good things. Now that he's back being the governor of Florida, he is... Easily one of the best conservative governors that we have. And Ron DeSantis over the weekend told donors at a private meeting that he plans to fundraise for Trump. That's the plan. And I think, good. It is time. Because we know we need DeSantis in the fold. The, the, the whole Trump movement, we all have to understand, we need DeSantis. We need him. We need to, him to help with his policies. We need him to help with fundraising. And he's jumping in the fight. So, yeah, we need that. Need him activated. We need that. To We need him <laughs> to t take those fancy boots and put them <laughs> where the sun don't shine for the Democrats. And he's going to. Sources familiar with the situation told NBC News that during a private retreat last weekend, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis expressed his intention to assist in fundraising for Trump's campaign uh, to donors and supporters. He said it in front of a group of people at the Hard Rock, an advisor to DeSantis told NBC. Uh, that occurred at a gathering on Saturday at the Hard Rock Casino and Resort near Miami. And uh, the advisor stressed that when DeSantis withdrew his presidential candidacy, uh, he made a commitment to support Republicans at all level, including the presidential uh, level. I just say thanks. Like, we we need DeSantis. And with this kind of stuff, a, as we move forward, I, I've said this for a long time. I think we need Trump in 24. He's going to be able to do things that somebody with an eye towards reelection can't. Uh, if DeSantis won the primary, he wouldn't be out there pushing the greatest mass deportation event in, in American history. He wouldn't. Uh, but a guy like Trump can get in there and do these things that need to be done. And then DeSantis can run in 28 and he won't have that kind of stuff hanging over his head or derailing him. So I, I think this is good. And I will be open to supporting DeSantis in 28. Full disclosure. I, I think that that should have always been the plan. I just didn't like how DeSantis went about it in the primary. I just didn't. But I think it's good that he's, he's he's jumping on board. However, I do I do want to uh, say as we as we head towards the election, uh, it's like everything that's old becomes new again. Uh, the CDC warned state leaders to have an up to date operational plan for bird flu. Bird flu's back. I know. Calm down. Calm everyone. Everyone, remain calm. <laughs> Remain calm. We have a plan. Hopefully they keep Fauci and uh, Deborah Burks far, 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 far away from the plan. Far away. Center for Disease Control and Prevention, uh, also known as the CDC, warned state health officials 
to prepare for a surge of bird flu cases in humans as more cattle herds across the nation test positive. Uh, that CDC alert was given uh, Friday uh, in a meeting with state leaders telling them to make sure, make sure that you have up-to-date operational plans in case more farm workers test positive for the H5N1 virus. Oh, my gosh, when they put it like that. Like, bird flu sounds kind of funny. Uh, H5N1, that's that's terrifying. It's terrifying. I think, I think the only thing we could do uh, is just switch to mass mail-in voting to keep everybody safe, right? It's probably the move. Uh, a Texas dairy farmer... Uh, in, a de- Texas dairy farm employee, I guess would be a farmer, uh, recently tested positive for the highly pathogenic influenza, making for the second case in humans in the U.S., the CDC also said Friday. Whew. Two cases. You know what? You know how pandemics start? Uh, they start with one case. And then you know what immediately follows that? Two cases. So we're trending in a, in a terrifying direction. First positive case was in Colorado uh, in 2022. So with that, I mean, does that even count? Does that count? Would you count that as the 22 is the first, 24 is the second? Or can we just, do we, when do we start? When do we refresh? Yeah, where's the, the line? When do we refresh the ticker? <laughs> you know what I mean? If it was 2002, would this still be the second or what? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> even though the virus is currently not prevalent in humans, Officials are concerned, so you should be concerned, too. Everyone. Oh, jeez. That was a delayed concern. Uh, And and officials are concerned it could uh, become so due to the uptick in cattle that have tested positive. Majority of cattle uh, with bird flu are located in Texas, but are also uh, on farms across Kansas, Mac. Ugh. A lot of cows. A lot of cows. New Mexico, Ohio, Michigan, and Idaho also have bird flu. Bird flu and cows. 4736 in the Members Nutrition Super Text line said, cases have doubled this year. (laughs) 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 Oh, we've seen seen a 100% increase. (laughs) This is terrifying. Oh, Sally said the exact same thing right as I said it on the members nutrition text line. Bird flu has increased by 100%. <laughs> Everyone, remain calm. Remain calm. 2889 said, what about the fungus flu? Was there a fungus flu? Fungus flu? Fungus flu. <laughs> the only thing we can do is uh, mail-in votes. <laughs> Text text to vote, right? <laughs> Didn't a guy go to jail for saying doing the text uh, to vote meme? Yes, yes. So maybe I won't do that. Not looking forward to uh, <laughs> voting from jail, so I won't I won't make that joke. It's eleven forty eight on Super Talk ninety nine seven WTN. Hey, it's Chris Hand here to tell you about my friends at Busy Bee Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling. You hear me talk about them all the time, but it is that time of the year. Uh, it's going to get hot. It's going to stay hot. Have you serviced your AC to make sure it's running at maximum? peak efficiency is it maximum peak efficiency or is it peak maximum efficiency either way busy bee can do it for you but you need to get it serviced the right way the busy bee way with busy bee plumbing heating and cooling otherwise you're waiting for a problem to pop up this time of year and as it gets hot and stays there you do not want those problems now whether you need annual maintenance or you've been kicking the can on repairing or replacing your plumbing heating or air system call who i trust Busy Bee Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling. Again, if, if if your AC went out at the end of last season and you're waiting to replace it, do it now. It's going to be hot before we know it. And if you need to replace it, you won't find a better value on replacement systems. Busy Bee will give you up to 12 months with no payment, no interest, with approved credit. And it'll pay in so many ways to sign up for those added rewards and savings by becoming a Beehive member. We love being Beehive members at the Hand Household. And being a Beehive member will get you front-of-the-line service should you ever have a problem. It'll get you the thorough annual maintenance on your plumbing, heating, and air systems. Plus, no overtime charges 24-7 and 10% off all repairs it will pay for itself 
to become a Beehive member. Remember, they'll come see you on Saturday. They have those convenient availability hours because many conservatives work during the week, so you got to be able to see them on Saturday. And uh, you don't want to be stuck waiting over the weekend to have your AC fixed. Busy Bee, your rude pro partner for satisfaction guaranteed. Call Busy Bee Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling, 615-775-7833. That's 615-775-7833 or online, busybeehvac.com.
11.56 on Super Talk 99.7 WTN. Matt Murphy joining me in studio. What's up? It's Chris Hand. Uh, I, Matt has on the best hat that I've seen Murphy wear. I, I can't put my headphones on because of my hat. You just got to do it. You got to do it like the old Sonys behind the head. Well, yeah, like that. There you there go. There you go. The hat Where needs to stay. Works. The hat needs to stay. It's a little... It will not stay for the Murphy show, so enjoy it, you super texters, super talk TVers, while you can. Well, because of the you know, the headphone, I can put it on above. Here's what I'll do. Here's, here's what I'll do. Oh, I like this. this yep. There. Headphones first. Bucket hat. <laughs> no, you, try you, it. That's try not, it. That's try not it the look. Try it with not, the headphones. That's on not top. the one. Do the now. Do the hat. Do the headphones on top. Okay. This is great for you radio folk. Yeah, this exactly. Is, this is great for the it's radio. It's theater people. of the mind. It's yeah, theater of the right. mind. He's flipping uh, up the buck. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> that, that is a look. Now we're, now we're talking. Well, that is a look. Got a little Hunter S. Thompson going on here. I like it. Mm-hmm. Going to shoot off some cannons or something. Ah, there's bats everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> what's uh, what's happening, man? Not much. Um, it's uh, it's Friday Eve. <sighs> That was from Todd on the Members Nutrition Thurs- Text Line. It's Thursday. I gave it, I, it's I, called Thursday. I gave it to Todd because he was here on time. It's called Thursday. This is an important Thursday. It's called Thursday. Yes, it is. It is? There's no question. It's everyone else's Friday. They're saying, they're saying there's no shot for our boy Tiger. <laughs> well, there's no shot because he's old and, you know, he had his leg crushed and all of that. But there's also no shot because of the rain and it makes it soggy yeah, harder to Yeah, that's walk. what's actually going to be hard for him. Yeah. They told me that in 2018, though, too. It's exact 2019, but 2019, yes, that's, exa- that's exactly right. He's over. He's washed up. He's done. Is Tiger's still playing. Is he doing? He is. This? Believe it or not, he's 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 younger. The thing is that he look he walks around like he's eighty, and okay. he's yeah. two years younger than me. <laughs> I mean, but that's what that's what he he has fifteen majors and ten. He's had ten surgeries, five on his back, and that's not including that. That's calling the leg surgery just one surgery. But you know, you have this youthful energy about well, you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think like not many people can replicate it. You know what I mean? Yeah, right before we it came on air. Youthful jubilee. Oh, right, right. No, no, no. Right before we come on air, hands. I was like, "Is it a good show?" I missed a lot. And he goes, "Yeah, we had fun today. We like to have fun." He gives me this look, and I said, "Well, I like to have fun too." For me, yelling and screaming at people is fun. I have fun listening to you. Yelling and <laughs> yeah, screaming well, at people. I have fun listening to you have fun. All right. Uh, let's. Well, we're gonna hug it out later. I think the hat needs to stay because I've noticed that your joy levels are through the roof with your hat like that. I can't help it. You know, I I <laughs> I, I think it's a byproduct of a, exactly the circumstances of my youth, how I grew up, how I viewed. I I love this week. I love Masters Week, uh, and I just do. And and it's because I grew up there because we were poor and that was rich people folk doing rich people things. And I I don't know. It's just everything about it. So it gives me joy in my life, Chris Ann. You know that I've never watched the Masters? Whoa. Not going to start today, I tell you that, boys. I don't, I don't, I don't blame you. Not going to start. I don't blame you. It, it feels too more, much more like... For, more for us. It feels, I was say, yeah. It yeah, feels too much like current thing. You guys... You guys, <laughs> oh you guys, well, keep, you guys keep your current thing, it's current all right? Current thing. Golf's been around for 300 years. Current thing. It's current thing. Uh, Murphy's in next. He's on noon to three. Brian Wilson after him. It's Super Talk 99.7 WTN.